If you haven't done so yet, just make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. In order to determine the number of grams of iodine that are needed to complete this titration, we're going to follow a sort of roadmap that allows us to convert the volume of one substance, in this case Na2S2O3, into the number of grams of a different substance. So let's take a look at that roadmap. Now in this roadmap, we have put a double-headed arrow between all of the quantities, <clears throat> excuse me, to indicate that you can convert in both directions. Now in this problem, we're going from milliliters of one substance to grams of a different substance, but you could work it the other way as well. Now to convert from milliliters of a substance into liters of that same substance, we're going to do a simple standard unit conversion. And then to go from the liters of the substance to its moles, you can use the molarity, as we will see. And you'll notice that the molarity of Na2SO3 was given in the question. Then to convert from moles of that Na2S2O3 into moles of iodine, you're going to use the coefficients from the balanced reaction. And of course, the balanced reaction was given in the question right here. And then finally, to convert from moles of iodine into grams of iodine, you're going to use the molar mass, which we will obtain by referring to the periodic table. So let's begin our journey through this roadmap by writing down the number of milliliters of Na2S2O3, which in this case is 34.65. And it's a good idea to label your units as you go. So let's make sure we write mLs of Na2S2O3. Many students prefer to put this initial quantity over one, which is totally fine. And then we can put it in parentheses as well. Now we're going to be multiplying this quantity by a conversion factor. If we look at the roadmap, we're going to be converting from milliliters into liters. And of course, we all know from our standard unit conversions that one milliliter of a substance, which again is the Na2S2O3, will equate to 10 to the negative three liters of that same substance. And you wanna notice the way in which we wrote this out. So the milliliters of the substance is placed in the numerator at the beginning, but then it's placed in the denominator in the conversion factor. And this will allow us to cancel out those units, leaving us with liters. We can now move on to convert from liters into moles using the molarity. And once again, the molarity in the problem was given. Remember that this capital M is the same thing as moles per liter. So one way we can think of that 0 0.140 capital M would be 0 0.140 moles per one liter. So if we go to our conversion factor, we're gonna make sure that we put liters in the denominator and that way, the liters of Na2S2O3 will cancel with the liters of Na2S2O3. And as we just noted, one liter of that substance corresponds to 0 0.140 moles of that substance. We can go ahead and cancel out the liters. And we're about halfway through our roadmap. So now we're going to convert moles of that sodium into uh, S2O3 into moles of iodine. And as we noted, we're going to be using the coefficients from the reaction. Now here is iodine in the reaction. And then here is the S2O3 ion. We'll notice that they are in the so-called 1 to 2 ratio. So that just means that one mole of iodine will react with two moles of S2O3. So we'll come over here. We'll try to squeeze this in. So we will put the moles of Na2S2O3 down here, and then the moles of I2. And from the coefficients, we see again that one mole of iodine reacts with two moles of Na2S2O3, so we can cancel out these moles. And then we're one step away. We need to go from moles of the iodine into grams, and for that, we'll use the molar mass. Now let's grab a snapshot of the periodic table. So we've taken iodine out of the periodic table here and we can see that its molar mass is 126.9 roughly 
Now, of course, this formula contains two iodines. If you look carefully, it says I2. So the molar mass will be 126.90447 multiplied by 2. That would give us the full molar mass of the I2 molecule, and that comes out to 253.80894. And this unit of molar mass will be grams per mole grams per mole. So what this means is that one mole of iodine has a mass of the 253.80894 grams. Notice again the way in which we have aligned the conversion. The moles of iodine are in the numerator in the first quantity and then the moles of iodine are in the denominator of the second one. This way they cancel out. And that leaves us with grams of iodine. So the last step is to pick up our calculator and to very carefully type this all in to get our final answer. And when you do that, you should get approximately 0 0.616 grams of iodine. And that is indeed the correct answer.